Hello and welcome. I am Castle Dude, Neil. <laughs> welcome to Church Castle. Church Castle was built in 1295 by King Edward. Um, it's one of the last castles in North Wales um, which was built in order to quell uh, the remaining Welsh prince um, that was dissenting against the English. Um, actually a few weeks ago I visited uh, Flint Castle. Um, that was the first of the Welsh English castles of Edward I. Um, and basically this is the last one behind me. So. Are you ready? Let's go and take a look. After you. Alright then, if you insist, I'll go first. Okay, we've made it up to the main entrance of the castle. And as I was saying before, this right here is the oldest part of the castle. And look at that for a main entrance. I mean, I'll just walk backwards. Back in the olden days, literally there would have been a drawbridge um, you can see how big the original door would have been I mean it's huge we'll go up to it and so you can get a good perspective with me standing underneath well that's the surrounding views so you can clearly see every any invading forces anyone coming for miles and miles um, but just take a look at the architecture I mean look how tall Look how high that is. It's actually been uh, reconstructed by the Middleton family and turned into a mansion. We're going to take a look. Take a look at this main entrance, it's so cool. Okay, so I'm going over the drawbridge now. As you can see here, into the main door with the main archway. I'll just spin you around and we can take a proper tour inside. Okay, here is the central courtyard. I've just come through that door there, as you can see. It's pretty impressive. Um, it's a palatial manor house now. All of this section here is an extension and the original castle is actually here you can see it goes round these are modern I say modern they're probably from the 1700s the Middleton family purchased the castle and spent many many thousands of pounds transforming it into what you see today and now it's it's one of the most well-preserved castles in Wales. It's actually actually situated in a town called uh, Chirk, which is in the Welsh Marches. Um, you can just see, I mean, the attention to detail, although they're modern windows, they do blend in. Absolutely fantastic. There's the castle walls there. You can see how high it is. Uh, it's in Chirk in the Welsh Marches, close to the English border, and yeah, it's it's really cheap, really accessible. You can bring your dogs walking around the gardens. You can see how big and impressive the courtyard is. I mean, it is literally. This is where the horses and carriages would have come in. Let's go and have a little wander. Okay, I am now inside uh, Church Castle, specifically the Adam Tower. I've just come up these medieval spiral staircases that I'm in check this out. Look at that. And then that section's closed off. And look, it goes all the way up. It's quite incredible. And here you can see, this is an authentic medieval interior of a castle. So this is what a castle would have looked like when it was first built. And you can imagine people 
walking down here with candlelight. Um, so obviously there wasn't any electricity back in those days. Um, and I just think this place is one of the best castles that you can come to and really imagine what life was like. It's, I mean, here we've got some typical, look, look at that fireplace, I mean, it's beautiful. And here is a staffel of Sir Thomas. Um, I think that's written in Old English uh, and I won't read it, I'll let you read that yourself. There's a big log for all you uh, log fanatics. Um, and this is, uh, I'm not exactly sure who that is, it's either Roger de Mortimer who built the castle and the castle was completed in 1330, there or thereabouts. And as you can see, what he's wearing there in that picture, in the painting, is here. Now whether or not this was actually his that he wore then, when he sat for the painting, I don't know because there's no, uh, there's no information um, boards with these exhibits, but I mean, it's really cool all the same. And here, if you can see that, let's go a bit closer because the light's pretty dull. That's a typical dress at the time. You can see there would have been a corset, and then down to the skirt, this was a style. You see, I mean, they were doing Kim Kardashian booties back in the medieval time, so. Really, Kim Kardashian is a bit of a copycat, really, because they were doing it well before her time. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Look at this beautiful Norman Star Arch window. This, I can only assume, would have been a bedroom. And given the size and grandeur of it, I would say it was one of the main bedrooms. Because you've got a really, really big fireplace. This would have got beautifully warm if you have a look you can see how high I am up the castle I am almost level with the roof of the castle and you can see the view out I mean look at that you can go past the pane glass window it's I would advise everybody to come here it's 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 incredible There's an archer's window. And you can see there, these marks have been put in over years and years and years. What they're quite for, I don't know. But they're there for a reason. I mean, this is so cool, getting the chance to walk on the inside of a castle and imagine myself or you, we, can imagine ourselves on the step what life would be like in, inside a medieval castle back in the day. Now there would have been many people here when it was a working castle, not just the family, but also servants, soldiers, chefs, cooks, butchers, you name it. This castle was basically a mini city it would have been that busy and teeming with life, teeming with people, teeming with animals. I mean, look, you can see the decoration here. They're obviously doing some res restoration work. Um, but you can see there's a Welsh, a dragon or a griffin, by the looks of it. Oh, the head of a horse with the, the tongue of a lizard. And look at that. There you go, there's a cryptid. There's the mechanism for the clock. 
on the other side. You can hear it ticking away. There's a pendulum swinging. How cool is that? Here's another section of the interior, as you can see, this part has been plasterboarded out and modernised. See, back in the olden days, you would not have a light bulb in that, you'd have a, a, a naked flame. Here's the, the windows, that's the view of the courtyard, you can see down there. Beautiful oak staircase. And check that out, an archer's window. Now, you would have to be lying down and I can only assume that that is a vital uh, protection point, hence they built it like this. But I've never seen one before an archer's window where the only way to shoot your bow and arrow out of it is by lying down. I mean, you can see how close it is to the floor. Let's go down. You can see how beautiful and big the, all the rooms are. Here you've got medieval oak beams in their original state. <laughs> Whoops, was that a ghost? No, it was me. <laughs> Obviously Daisy. So yeah. Look, they've even got a place for the, for people to store their wheelchairs and everything. It's absolutely amazing. Here are the medieval stocks where, had, had you been uh, breaking the medieval laws at the time, you'd be put in here and rightfully punished by rotten tomatoes, rotten vegetables, excrement, stones, anything that they could lay their hands on, you'd be publicly shamed in the courtyard of the church for everyone to see. Here we are in the castle gardens which are open to the public as well. And just look, they've done the, the hedges just like the top of a castle wall it's really cool. You can see, you can bring your pets, your dogs and bicycles around here, but not past this point, and I think that's because they don't want any dog mess or anything on the uh, castle gardens. How cool is that? And then looking back, you can see where we've come from there, the castle. And back in the day, there would have been many castle gardens. Um, there would have been formal gardens for the baron uh, and courtiers to walk around. Um, and there also would have been gardens for growing vegetables, the kitchen gardens. They're normally a walled garden because um, looting even of uh, vegetables was common at the time that so everything would have been um, sort of protected and watched over I mean look at this let's have a look now we can't actually go in because it's uh, cordoned off but I can pop our heads round and you can see can you imagine being the Baron this castle 
and entertaining your lady or most probably multiple ladies holding parties, banquets on the lawn all in front of the backdrop of your own home a castle I mean these guys were pretty important and there's a little notice board here we'll just take a look I'll read it for you Darlan Thomas Baddeslade the castle 1735 okay so these gardens were actually laid out and finished in 1735 and that's a depiction of what they looked like then uh, it's Thomas Baddesley's view of the castle in 1735. Note the formal gardens and the forecourt, gates and statues in front of the castle. So yeah, that's, that's what it was like in 1735. This was beyond the time when it was used as a, a fortification. This was when it was used as a, a mansion. Now, there's a statue up here. I think uh, we'll go and have a wander, shall we? Here's a statue that we could see from down there. Um, as you can see, to me, it looks like it's in the ancient Greek, Roman kind of style. Um, I can't really read the writing because it, it, it's in Latin. Uh, it says Heros, Multi Vagus. Liquidium, Trans, Hera, Vectus. I'm not going to carry on reading that because I'm embarrassing myself. But anyway, um, it is it is Roman. I can see the word Roman just there. So it is a Roman statue of, I assume it's Heros, uh, one of the gods. So how cool is that? And that would have been built... Let's see if there's a date. There is a date, but again, it's in Latin, and I can't. Um, something 37, but I can't quite. I'm not clever enough. I never did Latin in school. I'm not that posh. And there you can see. I mean, look at that. That's in line with the castle garden. So when you go on walks around your grounds, observing the formal gardens. You can see the statue, and if you look here, lined with trees. This is this is what it would have been like in the uh, hundreds of years ago as well, because you've got a line of sight all the way down there to the settlement in the distance. Excuse me, who said you could pull a moony at me? How very very cheeky and there we have Chirk Castle um, most of the inside at the moment is closed off to the public um, because uh, it's the winter period after March you can go into the gallery uh, all the ornate banqueting hall um, the private quarters and naturally over around that corner just around there that is where the Middleton's uh, descendants still live today um, which I think is quite impressive considering they came here I think it was in the 1500s so it's been passed down and passed down and passed down through the Middleton generation um, and they're still living there today they actually moved out I think one of the ladies in the cafe was telling me they actually moved out in March of last year, but there was a campaign for the Middletons to come back here and be in residence. Uh, and the, the whole entire castle and all of the grounds are owned by uh, the National Trust, uh, who actually gave me permission, rather, permission rather, to film. Um, yeah, they they hop, they own everything, the entire castle, all the land around it, and and there is some land. I mean.
mean, we walked around part of the uh, the castle grounds and gardens. Um, I just think, isn't that an amazing looking? It's just incredible, isn't it? I mean, the castle isn't bad either. <laughs> well, I just look at that. I mean, and to think we actually walked on, on the upper floors. We went up one of those towers. I don't think it was that one. I think it's on a different section. Um, yeah, I don't. I'm not sure which one is the Adam Tower, but we did go up one of those. Um, it's quite incredible, really, if you think about it. Um, it's a castle which is it's still inhabitable. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's really friendly here as well. The staff are really friendly. Um, they they tell you all questions about history on the castle. Um, and I just think it's beautifully set out. I mean, these are the public walkways behind me, what we're walking on now. Um, and I, I just think it's 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 really well laid out. Literally cost me like nine pounds fifty, which in US dollars it's going to be around eleven or twelve dollars, something like that. It's not a whole a whole lot of expense. Um, and they do discounts for families, so you know, a couple of parents, a couple of kids. It, it's really cheap actually. Um, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure we can go in that door behind me. I've got a feeling that's the dungeons. So, we'll go and have a look. I've got a feeling it is. And if it is, obviously, it's the spookiest part of the castle. Possibly the most haunted as well. A lot of death, pain and misery in a dungeon. I don't think it's open because the door's shut, but we will have a look. Just got to be careful up these steps, as you can see. And there we go. Let's go and have a look, shall we? So yeah, I'm not entirely sure what entrance this would have been, um, but it's certainly not a main entrance, possibly a servant's entrance, something like that, a workman maybe. Um, you can see there's a beautiful archway there, right by the corner of the tower. And then around the other side behind me, there's another tower. And I just think this place is a credit to the National Trust with how well preserved it is. It's obviously looked after. Um, you can see evidence of mortar being, and the walls being pointed and, and replaced. Uh, it, it's, it, I, I absolutely love this place. And I'm gonna come here again when I can uh, go on the inside and go and search around more of the ground floors during the spring and summer months and, I, and I'll take you guys on a tour as well. And what I'm gonna try and do, because it, it is a very popular castle, I'm gonna try and book a private tour so I can film a bit more freely without, you know, families and stuff being around. So yeah, well for now, let's go and take a look further down and have a look at the souvenir shop. 
Okay, that is the Adams Tower. I figured it out, and that is the tower that we went up. Um, so there, we climbed up the spiral staircase, and we went up to that window there, um, the higher one. That's where we went up to. It's really, really impressive uh, that they allow tourists to do that as well. All the steps were eroded away. Um, but here, you can really see the perspective of just how high and how imposing that would have been. If you're an invading force and you're trying to take over this castle, <laughs> you try climbing, scaling that wall, especially when you've got archers attacking you out of these archers' windows. Now, the corners are the most vulnerable places. They're the safest place to put uh, siege ladders because the siege ladders, they would have virtually touched the top of the castle, they were that long. Um, so you can see on the corners, there's one there, archer's window, archer's window, two there, one there, there's one there, there's two there again, and going up all the way up that corner. Because uh, the corners are the most vulnerable part of the castle. And interestingly, here's a castle turret fact now they chose to build the towers in a round design because with mortar and catapult fire uh, cannon fire um, it was it was much easier for if a ball uh, if ammunition hits uh, the round surface it gets deflected off and that's the same with fire as well because they used um, Fire was a massive weapon back in those days. They would have catapulted, burning bundles of hay, manure, anything that was flammable. And so it would deflect off the round parts. Uh, obviously, the walls, the, the flat walls, are more vulnerable to attack. But they're protected by these towers, these imposing towers on all corners. Okay join me here outside the workshops they're closed at the moment um, but obviously in the summer months they would have medieval reenactments uh, like blacksmithing uh, woodworking stonemasonry those kind of things period period of the time I just think you know the the architecture the atmosphere of the place the aura, it really is, it, it's awe inspiring and there's a really cool dovecote, um, it's probably the biggest dovecote I have ever seen, ever, um, and for those of you that don't know, a dovecote uh, is a place, it's, it's a home for doves, the birds, like pigeons, um, and I'll spin you around and we can have a look. So there you can see the dovecote behind me. It almost looks like a, a NASA rocket, a NASA spaceship. Um, that's where the doves would fly in and out, just there. There's the roof, and it, it's, it's got a high pitched roof, and that is to prevent birds of prey and other predators, um, anything really that can get up there and try and get in to the doves. Uh, and here, we'll have a little look down here. This is the, this would have been the, uh, the workers and the servants courtyard at the rear of the building. You can see there's some modern vehicles here at the moment. But th this is where all the workers would have come. They wouldn't be allowed in the main entrance at all, unless they were specifically told to. They would always have to come round here and remain in the servants' quarters. And if I just spin you round now, because the public isn't meant to come here, so we'll be quick. There's some stables and barns, which I think is brilliant. And this section here, um, you can see these walls, 
they weren't period of, of 1300. Uh, they were built much later. In a defence style, but as you can see, they're quite short. Um, so they're not for defence, they're more for decoration. And I think it's... I mean, can you imagine living in a place like this? I mean, I would be absolutely blown away. And there's the doorway to the dovecote, and you can see behind me there. Because um, they would have been used as a source for food. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about the eggs, but definitely... I mean, pigeon, we still eat pigeon today. It's quite, it's quite a delicacy in this country. I don't like it myself. Uh, I don't like the taste. Um, but, yeah, pigeon is quite, quite popular. Um, during the medieval times, they, their diet would have been more diverse than what ours is now. I mean, they wouldn't have been fussy as to what they can eat. Um, I could imagine they ate most things. And, in fact, on my way in today... Um, I actually saw uh, a hunt going on. I don't know if it was for pheasant or partridge or or what it was, but it was a typical hunt, and that would have that would have happened in the grounds of this castle. Uh, hunting, uh, there would have been a hunting lodge out in the ground somewhere, maybe a mile or so away from the castle. Um, And here, in fact, you can hear the gunshot of hunting behind me. There's a couple of benches there for people to sit and relax. Here's the main notice board for the castle, uh, as you can see. Castel Iwan Church Castle. Excuse me, my Welsh is awful. Even though I am a Jones, on my mother's side going back to around 1700, so around the time of this castle was turned into what you see today. Uh, completed in 1310, Church Castle later became home to the Middleton family for over 400 years. The estate parkland is a tranquil haven for veteran trees, grazed by native breeds, and an important habitat, Triple SI, which is a site of special scientific interest for fungi, bats, and deadwood invertebrates. And uh, you've just got a map of the castle. We're there, where the red dot is. There's the castle. There. <laughs> um, uh, you can see that the workshops, I mean, there's a castle mill that's closed. There's some woods there, which are in fact down there. Um, that's Mars Wood. Um, you've got the Offa's Dyke there which is a medieval fortification earthwork which stretches the entire length of the border of England and Wales which has been heavily fought over and indeed moved the border has actually moved over the centuries um, with various conflicts, captures, land grabs and indeed uh, retreats I had to stop and uh, just get this tree because judging by the thickness of it, you see that V-shaped tree there and the height and it just looks so much more, it's, it's way older than every tree pretty much surrounding it. Um, you could imagine, I mean, kids would have climbed that over the centuries, it's got to be at least 300 years old probably even older um, I mean these woods would have been here as well in the 1700s and beyond so it's really impressive I just wanted to capture that tree because obviously most people come here to look at the castle and they kind of overlook the woodland and the nature that's surrounding it um, so yeah Okay, we're coming to the end of the uh, tour of Chirk Castle. This time at least, I will be back because it is an absolutely brilliant castle with way much more to see uh, than I got a chance to today. Um, 
But being, you know, it's just past three o'clock in the winter, the light's starting to fade. Uh, I'm going to head over to the souvenir shop, see if I can get a cup of coffee and a nice memento from uh, our little tour of Church Castle. And as I always say, remember, be kind to each other, smile, have a laugh, and don't do anything I wouldn't do, which isn't a lot really. Take care, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. How cheesy was that ending? Come on. <laughs>